all activities here at the prison will be paused as far as when they'll return here to their homestead and rebuild. They're unsure. Just want to say this snow that's falling right now is great. So let the kids go out and play. See, this is the perfect kind of snow. You can see the crews are starting to clean up the debris. Four people are dead, and that is including the shooter. The trial today focused on the aftermath of the crimes. The kids can now record a podcast or a news report right in front of a green screen. They can also record their own song right here in the music studio. Not a lot of ice or sleet. Uh, they've been cleared. However, when you go into these smaller streets, into these side streets, into the neighborhood, it is a completely different story. You know, we wouldn't have survived that, I don't think, if, if we were not in our shelter. Shane, his wife Becca, and their two children have lived outside of Noble in their camper for almost a year on their homestead. But after Wednesday night's storms, the life they've spent months building was instantly changed. All of our years got pressurized um, and wouldn't stop pressurizing. And so that was the kind of the telltale sign that this wasn't just a really windy storm. Standifer says the storm began with large hail, then the wind picked up. He says they were in the shelter for about an hour before the worst part of the storm came through. You just started seeing all the wind just pick up massively. Um, and I mean, the cliche is always like it sounds like a train, and that's exactly right. The Standifers and another family took shelter here in this storm shelter. When the storm passed and they came out, they found that almost everything on their property had been destroyed. And we open it up and just being able to see as far as we did, like the first thing, we're like, oh my goodness, it's all gone. Like, we expected there to be trees down and stuff like that, but there was just nothing there. Parts of their home scattered across the land, their children's clothes tangled in branches and a bathtub blown into a tree. We didn't know where our campers were at at all. Um, they were all way down over here. And so just opening up and not seeing anything in front of us was just, it was so eerie. Right now, the Standifers are staying in hotels and with friends, not sure if and when they'll return to the homestead they were building. It'll be a long time before we end up getting back out here. Um, you know, that's one of the things where it's like, you know, we wanted to be out here with our best friends and be able to do this together, raise our kids together. Um, and so we just, we're not sure yet. But the most important things are still standing. Michael Brown started his career in law enforcement in 1995. He spent 22 years with the Tulsa Police Department. I had uh, uh, never thought that there was any better calling than, uh, than being there when people needed you. Now, he's a senior instructor for Tulsa Tech's criminal justice program. Like most who work in law enforcement, Brown says wearing the badge is rewarding, but along with rewards come challenges. Hurt children, hurt people, and you know, you just see the, you know, the results and what it does to families and what it does to people and how it changes their, their trajectory in life. In 2012, Brown confronted one of those challenges. A man had been shot and killed by police. Brown had to notify the family. Yeah, that's a, a, an extraordinarily difficult thing to go and tell people that their, their family members are gone. As Brown told the man's wife about his death, the man's daughter stood there as well. There was a, you know, an elementary school age, uh, age joke. <laughs> Sorry. There was an elementary school aged uh, young, uh, young girl there and uh, I didn't, uh, I, at the time, I did not think much of it, but uh, I didn't realize how important she'd be to me later. This past week, nine men and women were the first class to graduate from the Tulsa County Sheriff's Office's new academy. One of those deputies, Aliyah Sanchez. She was also a student of Brown's at Tulsa Tech. My father was shot and killed by a police officer. I, at first, I was angry about it. I didn't understand, but I realized that instead of being angry, I could do something myself about it. I can be that change. So what you could call a coincidence or maybe fate in a classroom at Tulsa Tech wasn't the first time Brown and Sanchez's paths crossed. Deputy Sanchez was that elementary school aged girl Brown remembered from 11 years ago. He told me, he was like, yeah, um, I know about that. I worked that. I worked that case. I was a supervisor on that case. Throughout heartbreak and difficulties came an unforeseen friendship. In a way, I feel like I was destined to meet him so I can be where I am now. Because without him, I wouldn't be where I am. You have the choice to, uh, uh, you know, to go down a path that's going to lead you to, uh, you know, to lack of a future, or you can lead yourself to a path that leads you to a pretty great future. 
and a life lesson to learn. You control your own destiny through tragedy, pain, and triumph. In a way, it was also my father making sure, like, to he put in my path so I can do good. In Tulsa, Shay Smith, 2 News, Oklahoma.